Mr. George, you are launching your manifesto today. Yes. What superior alternative are you offering to the Ghanaian people? Well, in terms of policies and ideas. Well, I, I will not sit here and intend to take the wind out of the sail of His Excellency President Mahama, who will lead and speak to our manifesto. But it's a manifesto that's very youth centric. In fact, for the first time, we've launched a youth version of our manifesto already. Um, I think sometime last week, last week, Monday, we, we launched the youth manifesto which focused and teased out the portions of our manifesto that deal with the young people of our country because that's an area that's of utmost importance to President Mahama. Um, the young people of our country have been hoodwinked, they've been gaslighted by Dr. Mahmoud Baumia and uh, President Akufuado, and we would not have the young people of our country gaslighted and hoodwinked again. And so we, 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 the, the bar has been raised. But, I mean, like I said, as we speak right now, if you are anywhere near the University of Education, Winnebar, you'd realize that we've set up um, thematic area booth, booths mm -hmm. where we're running through the highlights of the manifesto, even ahead of um, the, the event. Um, I chair the Digital Economy, ICT and Innovations Committee, and mm. my team is already on the ground there. And there are various other sectors thematic area sectors that are, are running. But like I said, I, I wouldn't want to speak to specifics. But there are, parts, there are parts of our manifesto that have already been put out. And even with the parts that have been put out, you can see that the NPP, what the NPP launched last weekend is heavily plagiarized. It's plagiarized. Heavily from, plagiarized. I mean, From it's, your ideas. And, and I'm just going to run through a few of them okay. with evidence so that it's not as though it's political talk. But yes, I'll on page on page nineteen and twenty two of their, you know, you have the key, the highlights, the, the highlights. Page nineteen and twenty two of that manifesto, they say they are going to train a hundred, a million youth in digital skills. Now, as far back as second of October, twenty twenty, I'm giving you dates. Mm -hmm. This was even before the formation of Movement for Change, so they can't even claim that is their policy, <laughs> because in twenty twenty there was no Movement for Change. Mm -hmm. On the 2nd of October 2020, uh, I'm taking care of that because I'll leave after my submission. No, that's, that's right. Yeah, so yeah, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm taking no care way, of both. Go that. That. As far back as 2nd of October 2020, there's a major online story that published President Mahama saying we will train 1 million youth in coding, and it was in our 2020 People's Manifesto. Again, when you take page 13 of our Youth Manifesto that was launched, it's the 1 million coders program. Again, on page 27 of the MPP's manifesto, they say they are introducing a free tertiary education scholarship for persons with disabilities to remove financial barriers. Now, if you take President Mahama's statement captured by Ghana Web on 27th October 2020, President Mahama promised, and again in our People's Manifesto, President Mahama promised free tertiary education for persons with disabilities. In fact, the NDC has gone beyond that now to do our no fee stress initiative on page seven of the youth manifesto, which goes even beyond persons with disabilities all the way to even every first year student having their academic fees paid, the academic user fee, the academic fees paid for them to drop that entry barrier that we see. On page 21 of the MPP's manifesto, they say they are going to abolish the betting tax. It's mm -hmm. strange. I mean, that Dr. Baumia, who introduced the tax, is promising to remove the tax and is expecting some credit for it. Before Dr. Baumia, we didn't know a betting tax. But again, if you go to President Mahama's speech, on the 2nd of May, 2023, Ghana at Crossroads at Kempinski, he spoke explicitly there, and again, it's captured by City Newsroom and TV3 uh, uh, three Newsroom as well, that we would abolish the, e, the betting tax. We stated there on the, on the 2nd of May, 2023. On page 23 of the MPP's manifesto, they promised to abolish the E-Levy. The E-Levy that they had Dr. Ama and Co. come in and defend and said that it was the best thing to happen to Ghana since Coca-Cola and Ben's bread. It will fix all our problems. E-Levy has not fixed the problems. Now Dr. Baumia on page 23 of your manifesto says they will abolish E-Levy. Well, again, at Ghana, the crossroads, May 2nd, 2023, we promised President Mahama had already made that commitment to abolish the E-Levy. On page 26, they said they're going to establish a women's trade empowerment fund. Again, on the 9th of July, 2024, President Mahama announced that the NDC was not going to establish a fund, but we would establish a women's development bank. So again, another stolen promise. On page 20 and 22, 
of your manifesto, you promised to set up a fintech fund with seed capital of 100 million. Again, you just heard that we had promised that, and so you ran on that. Because and on the 15th of March 2024, at Pedriasi, where we had an engagement with CSOs on the work that we we're doing, and again, mm -hmm. because that's my sector, the ICT sector, President Mahama announced our 50 million US dollar fintech industry fund to strengthen that industry. On page 28, they say, oh, we'll cap our ministers at 50. This is coming from Dr. Baumia. Who's, who at a point in time was vice president of a government that had 122 ministers and today has over 80 ministers. Now he says they'll cap at 50 because they had heard that President Mahama had stated that he would reduce the number of ministers and deputies drastically as far back as 3rd of March 2023. And I'm giving you dates. On page 28, they said that they're going to engage parliament and other stakeholders to review the 1992 constitution to achieve effective national development. This is the government that for eight years has failed to do anything on a constitutional review commission report that was there before they came in. But as far back as August 29th, 2022, President Mahama said we would amend the 1992 constitution or portions of the 1992 constitution and carry out constitutional review and even was specific to say that we will cancel ex gratia as far back as August 29th, 2022. On page 21 of your manifesto, you say you will implement a flat rate for all importers, bringing predictability and stability on prices of imported goods. As far back as April 10, 2024, President Mahama joined his tour of the Greater Accra, meeting uh, importers at the Shippers Council and at Abusi Okai, stated clearly what our policy on import duties were, the harmonization of import duties mm -hmm. to ensure that these prices are dropped. Again, on page 24, they said that they are going to stabilize the prices of spare parts through a flat rate for all importers. On the 17th of March 2024, President Mahama, meeting the Abusi Okai spare part dealers, had said this. And for the Abusi Okai spare part dealers, this was their response. They said, Mahama's spare part import proposal, a game changer. So this is, this is Abosio Kai reacting to us as far back as the 17th of March this year. On page 18, they said they are going to increase public-private partnerships as an important funding model for develop, delivering public infrastructure projects. On the 10th of June 2024, President Mahama spoke to the country and said that his administration will harness PPPs, BOT deals, to boost infrastructure development. Again, if you go to page 29 of their manifesto, and this is the last but one before I, I wrap up. On page 29 of their manifesto, they talk about protecting biodiversity and forest hotspots. This is coming from the government that is giving, that has issued an executive instrument that has allowed for mining in forest reserves and has just decided to sell off the last green belt that we have in Accra, the Achimota Park. That they're giving it off to sell to themselves. Are you talking and about now, the LI2426? Yes, that one. And, and that same party is now saying that they are going to do this. Meanwhile, as far back as 15th of May 2024, President Mahama outlined what we called our blue water policy, our small scale mining policy, and our tree for life policy. And it's even captured on page 13 of our youth manifesto, where we're going to aggressively green and reclaim lands that have been destroyed by, by, by the MPP and its appointees. Because when we see party here, Sika, you remember that, 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 that audio from Frimpong Boateng's office, Professor Frimpong Boateng's office. And the last one, page 27, they said they're going to increase the stock of student accommodation in our public universities. Oh, my God. Go and read page 7 of the NDC's Youth Manifesto. We have an aggressive bed-for-all program that will work with the private sector to build accommodation facilities on all tertiary campuses. So you clearly see that the government of the MPP's manifesto is plagiarism, there's nothing original, and when you take someone's idea and because you don't understand it, that you, it are, you can't you implement it. You are seeking it. to do the same things, but through different channels. And so if you say it's plagiarism, it means mm. they are actually lifting and, you and, and saying exactly what you're going to do. So I, you are talking about one million trading... One, yes, uh, one million codes. One million. We've been saying this and since 2020. The, the MPP said they are doing one million training for... IT, IT training for young people. What, is, is it the same? Absolutely. How? We, we, we announced a one million but, but coders co program. Coding, and we stated, coding, but, you see, but coding is just one part of <laughs> IT. No, no, you see, you see. No, so, no, no, so, no. No. so they, they said they, said they are going to do digital skills. Yes. Now, what digital skills they haven't specified? They haven't yes. told you. You have specified that it's coding. We, we've specified coding. We've actually specified how we're going to achieve the, the one million. We've actually specified how we're going to roll it out. And, the, and uh -huh. you see, the beauty of it is, because we have thought it through and we have a blueprint for our policy, if it, again, I don't want to go into the details of the manifesto, but the coding, the coding is linked to a number of other things. One of the things the coding is linked to, is, which I can speak about because President Mahama has already announced that, is the Digital Jobs Initiative. Mm -hmm. Now, you, 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 you don't just train a million people in coding. 
You train a million people in coding, what are they going to do? You can't have a million ICT entrepreneurs. Absolutely. You must have a place to offtake them. And that's why we have the Digital Jobs Initiative that's going to employ 300,000 young Ghanaians. So it's... In, the, the, in which areas? Employing 300,000 young In, in digital where? jobs. It's called Digital Jobs Initiative. The breakdown and all will come. But it's, it's, it's in partnership with the private sector. We have okay. the blueprint for it. Now... So that's already 300,000 out of your 1 million that you're taking out. Apart from that, we've announced our ICT packs, our digital innovation packs. We, we did the first pilot, the Accra Digital Center. We have a track record. In eight years, they've not built any digital center. With all the digitalization talk that they have, they make, they've not built a single digital hub or digital, uh, uh, di digital center. That's, we that's we built the Accra Digital Center. That's not true. Uh, no, so please, got, which digital we center have you about built? about 45 digital hub, ICT hubs. Please. We're not talking about. We're not talking about ICT labs just, that you built. You said. No, you I said, said digital have, centers. No, not hub. hub. No, no, no. But a hub is different. A hub, but, a hub is. But that's a hub is no, basically no, no, an ICT room coming. with that's 30, 40 computers so you say in it's there. It's a starting point for you. So that's what. Okay, no, fine. I, I mean, I mean, I mean, you guys think small. We think big. It's fine. You want digital hubs? We're talking about digital centers, transformative, transformative digital centers. Not done anything. You don't have a digital center. I'm not talking digital hubs. I'm talking digital centers. When you go to the Accra Digital Center, there are multiple hubs. There. Right. We have a document processing hub there. We have a business processing outsourcing hub there. So in that digital center, you've got multiple hubs. Okay. Do you get it? So I'm not talking about hubs. It's just like the way when we are talking about building hospitals. They talk about building wards in hospitals. I mean, look, the MPP think small. They think within within the confines of the, of the small box. We are big thinkers. We are transformational thinkers. Because when, when it comes to infrastructure, you've heard about our big push, $10 billion over, over, 10, over five years. So for me, talk, I mean, for me, I'm, I'm just going to state clearly, we've seen your manifesto. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bunch of huff and fluff. There really is no substance to it. In fact, the GTP has more substance. The GTP is less than 10 pages, if I'm not mistaken. It's, no, no. it's, it's, it's a 10 bullet point, I think, 10 bullet or, or point, so. I think but even about... in that, you see more substance than 296 pages of just flowery language that's plagiarized and AI generated. But you see, the real stuff is going to come out today. And when President Muhammad finishes <laughs> delivering it, you will realize that we have a blueprint, we have a future, we have a vision, and the young people of our country and the agri, uh, and, and agri processing is going to be at the heart of the next Mahama government over the next four years. We interrogated your, yes, your, your youth manifesto last week. We will wait for the details as you talk about. Sure. Because we'll have to know specific areas, for instance, that you expect the private sector to move in. Private sector, as we speak, in its current form and nature, is struggling because of all what they've had to go <coughs> because through. Because of the mess of the NPP's government. Yeah. So if you're expecting <coughs> private sector to do so much, in the next four no, years, we will enable them. I want to There's know a lot of enabling, the specific enablement. enabling, you, you enabling oh, look, measures six, you know, Alfred, that you want to put Alfred, in place. Let me just give you a typical example. Do you know what 16, 16 million dollars that has been thrown down the drain in air conditions? Do you know what that could have done in ICT, increasing ICT jobs in a BPO? Okay. In fact, the Accra Digital Center, we built it with $10 million. The whole Accra Digital Center, we built it with $10 million. So $16 million would have almost built two. By the time you add what they spent on accreditation and that, would have built two ICT centers, digital centers, one in, in, in the Middle Belt and one in the Northern region. But they use it and they've, well, they've blown it away. 